I have killed so many plants, you guys. It's not even funny. But if there's one thing the pandemic has taught me, it's that plant serial killers have an opportunity for redemption. Katie, if it's your first time here, welcome to my epic motherhood. I have six kids and I make lifestyle and DIY videos here on my channel. So if that sounds like your thing, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. So today we're going to talk about how to keep your houseplants alive. Even though I have killed many houseplants, I am shifting the blame to my mother because she has a notorious black thumb. However, there is hope for all of us because this year, even my mom kept a few plants alive. So during the lockdown of 2020, I jumped on that houseplant bandwagon and I don't want to brag, but I've kept about 20 plants alive. No, really, it's nothing. I'm going to tell you all the tips and tricks that I've learned to keep my houseplants alive. And if you stick around to the end, I'll give you a little tour of my plant babies. So this window is actually in my kitchen. It's slightly west facing and it gets gorgeous afternoon sun, which is a little dangerous in the summer in Texas, but overall is wonderful for the plants. They've loved it. To be fair, it is the end of winter here. End of January equals end of winter. So some of them look a little bit sad or droopy or have yellowing leaves and that's in part because sometimes I forget to water them but also because a few of them need to be repotted and I haven't wanted to do that in the winter. I've wanted to wait until spring when there's new growth and they have a better chance of surviving that kind of traumatic transplant that a repotting is. But this week it's actually turned warm. It's 80 degrees today people. And I kid you not, every single plant on this windowsill has a new baby leaf coming out and it's thrilling. <laughs> so what does a plant need to stay alive? They need three basic things, good light, good soil, and water. So I'll just tackle each one of those individually. The first thing is lighting. When I first got plants, I bought certain plants to put in certain places in my house. My plants thought that was a joke. Oh, you wanna put me there? Well, I'll just die then. I don't live in one of those Pinterest homes filled with natural light, and I quickly realized my plants liked the sun and they needed more of it. So I rearranged my living room. So we live in Texas and most of the windows get a decent amount of light year round. However, in some of the Northern climates, you have to be a little bit careful because some windows facing certain directions don't get as much sun as other windows and some plants need more light than others. So you can kind of look up each individual plant and see what they prefer, but in general they need to be relatively close to a window, either direct or indirect sunlight. Seriously, they'll be so happy in the sun and honestly they look kind of magical with the light filtering through their green leaves. Okay, the second thing is well irrigated soil. If you put just plain dirt in your plant pot or even just like plain potting soil, it can actually be too dense for a plant. So that means that the water is gonna sit in the soil too long and it will encourage bacterial growth and you will get the dreaded root rot. There's a super easy fix to this. You just mix perlite, which are those little white styrofoam balls, in with your potting soil. You can do like a two to one ratio, so like two cups of soil and one cup of perlite. That's a pretty standard measurement. Or you can just eyeball it, which is what I do. The perlite keeps the soil dry and the plants happy and green and not wilty and yellow. Another important part of having well irrigated soil is having a well draining pot. There's a couple of ways of doing this. I have both. You can either plant your plant into a nursery pot that has lots of drainage holes in the bottom and then put that nursery pot into a decorative pot or you can use a decorative pot that has drainage holes in the bottom and then put it over some sort of tray. I have a lot of clear plastic trays. You really can't see them, but it keeps 
water from getting all over my furniture. Having drainage holes is super important because no matter how much perlite you put in, if you don't have drainage holes, you will still get the dreaded root rot. Okay, the third and final thing is water. To put it simply, don't overwater your plant, but also don't underwater it. So that's easy. <sighs> Just kidding. But seriously, there are several ways to figure out if your plant needs water, and I promise you, you can do this. Some people water on a schedule, like once a week in the summer months or once every two weeks in the winter months because plants need less water when there's less light. I don't personally do that because I'm terrible at sticking to routines. So I just check them every day or two to see if they need water. And it's super easy to check them. You can buy a water meter and a hydration meter and a thing that measures the pH in the soil. But the easiest way is to just stick your finger into the pot. And if it comes out with no dirt on it, it's dry and needs water. And if it has dirt sticking to it, then it doesn't need water. Plants that need water are also much lighter than plants that don't need it. So sometimes I'll pick up the pot and see how heavy it is. Some plants get a little dramatic if they need water, but I don't have many dramatic plants. I got rid of those. They found new forever homes, but usually if I can tell they're thirsty by looking at them, it's gone a little too far and I try not to wait that long. Sometimes plants will have yellowing on their leaves and that can be a sign that they need more water but that's also a sign of overwatering, so it's not as good of an indicator of whether or not it needs water. It just shows you that something is off with your watering. You're just doing it wrong. So that's pretty much it. There are lots of other things about taking care of plants like fertilizer and pest infestations and different types of plants have different needs, but in general, if you do these things with your plants, they'll be pretty happy. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit me up with any questions or comments down below. Do you have any success stories? Any other advice you wanna offer people? I would love to hear from you, even if you're just telling me about all the plants you've killed. But good luck with your plant babies. I'm gonna do that little plant tour that I promised and we'll see you again soon. Bye. All right, guys, here's my plant babies. This is my pilea, which I am very, very proud of. I have literally done nothing and it is just, it's exploded. And it even has little babies. Whoop, whoop. This is my dream plant, Monstera adansoni, wide form. I sound very fancy when I say that, but I absolutely love the leaves on the Swiss cheese plant. This is a new baby coming out. This is just a pothos, which is a very common house plant and um, it was one of my first ones that I got um, for super cheap because they're so common and I didn't feel guilty if it died. But look at that long tendril. It's growing so nicely. Once again, a baby. And this is also a pothos. I believe this is the um, Marble Queen variety. And I just love the variegation on the leaves. They're absolutely stunning. This is one that really needs to be repotted. It's in a nursery pot and I want to pot it into this one, but like I said, I've been waiting till spring. Plant baby. This is my Monstera Adansoni narrow form. I thought I was buying a wide form, so I wasn't. I like this one, it's a cutie. It needs to climb, so I need to put a pole or something in it. However, it's yellowing and I don't know why. And it's making me sad because once they're yellow, they don't go back, man, but we'll figure it out. It's still healthy and it's being very patient with my learning curve. This is a Phyllos Brazil. I got this from <laughs> Ikea of all places and it has thrived. It is in this tiny, tiny little garden pot and it's chooge. And look at that baby. Look at that. It's just sprouting out new leaves everywhere. And I love when the new ones come in, they have a little pink to them. And it just makes me really happy. This is a, another Monstera. This is a pearl and jade, I believe. Also putting out babies. And the variegation on this one is also absolutely stunning. 
these are the plants at my kitchen sink. This was from cuttings from my husband's grandma's garden and it's a ground cover, but it's super cute and it's doing okay, not great. Um, this is my string of pearls and string of bananas that I planted together because I was impatient to have a full plant. And so they're going to grow in one pot together. So that'll be interesting and fun. But this has grown from having, it was about this long uh, when I first planted the cuttings and now it's this long, which is amazing. And this is also another uh, plant from Ikea. It's a succulent and I love the variegation that's like a white and green and babies. This is my Monstera Deliciosa and um, this leaf actually is new since I got it and it has the most fronds and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's my favorite leaf probably in the whole house. And then I have the infamous fiddle leaf fig that is so popular right now. You know you're supposed to shake them to mimic the wind so that their roots grow stronger. I mean, talk about high maintenance. This is a Dracaena, which was a rescue plant, and it's actually doing quite well. And this is a spider plant that's doing terribly. I just moved it here because it was not happy where it was, and there are plant babies, so there is hope. This is one of my favorites. It was thriving a few months ago, and now it's not. This is a Tradescantia lilac. And when I got it, it was like three little strands like this. And now it's grown all the way out here, which is awesome. But you see, I've lost all these leaves. So poor thing. This is one of my pride and joys. It's another one of my dream plants. This is called a Pilea Glauca. And if you look closely, you can see that the leaves sparkle in the sunlight. I also have this beautiful rubber tree that is dusty, sorry about that, but it's been putting out new leaves and I love it. A new one here that's coming and a new one here, so we're all good even though it clearly needs to be repotted. And uh, that's it. 